Second of all, as I say, want to do a problem for you. It was not my intention to, uh, to trick students, but I did in spite of my intentions. So let's talk about it. This was the problem in question. Let me also, in our PI 84 loading, I'm going to bond it for the end of the class. So, this was the problem in question. And I hadn't, um, I didn't do anything quite like it in class. So, no shade on the students who did this, but what I normally saw was the following. You put the three there, that's correct. And then you copied down the coefficients. And it's by a sort of perverse chance, I told you, oh, you can check your work. You just, as long as you have a zero there, everything's probably correct. And you do get a zero there if you write this down, but it's not correct. So that was a bit of bad luck. Um, the problem here is that you need to write down missing coefficients. So the synthetic division process assumes you'll start with your first coefficient. So 2x to the sixth, great. Then you count down negative six x to the fifth. And then we skip a number, right? Six, five, three. But you can't skip numbers in the synthetic division, even though we don't have a fourth term written here. It has to be zero x to the fourth. And then negative four x cubed. 13x squared, negative 2x, negative 3. So why'd you add the zero? Um, because we're looking, we're looking at these powers, and we've got a sixth power, a fifth power, third, second, first. Power. And you'll notice that we've skipped a number. Six, five, we don't have a fourth power. Three, two, one. So the zero is representing the fact that we don't have a fourth power. And after you do that, uh, nobody seemed to struggle really with the synthetic division itself. So I won't, uh, won't dwell on it, but the two comes down, two times three is six, do the addition is zero, then we get several zero terms. And we end with a remainder of zero. So as I say, actually doing the synthetic division, that didn't seem to be a great problem. Um, but, and, and again, this is my fault, didn't do any examples like this in front of the class, 
but you have to write in any missing terms. So the topic of today is synthetic division and factoring. And for most of the semester, I've tried to be a pretty strong advocate of, of, of you know, motivating material, trying not to just say, here's a math thing, but trying to sort of show where it can be used. Um, with this one topic, I, I have to confess I'm kind of stumped. This, this is basically a classroom activity. It doesn't have real world applications that I can think of. It is in the course description, so it does need to be talked about at least a little in spite of that. So, to the best of my ability, this is the only topic like that in the class, but, but it is what it is. So here's our, here's our goal. Use synthetic division to find ugly roots of a polynomial Assuming you have some nice roots. And that goal stated that way is maybe kind of cryptic. Let's give an example of the sort of thing we're talking about. P of X equals X cubed plus X squared minus three X plus one. Here's a polynomial. Let's take a look at its roots. We'll just type this into our calculator. Um, X cubed plus x squared minus 3x plus 1. So here's this polynomial. It has three roots. I don't know how easy this is to see from the back of the room, but it has a root here. It has a root here, and it has another root here. Let me, let me mess around with the windows to try to make these roots more visible. Let's go from maybe negative four to three. And y can maybe go from negative five 
two positive five. So there's our root here. And about all we can say about this root is that it's between negative two and negative three. And there's a root here. And about all we can say for this root is that it's between zero and one. But there's also a root here, and this root looks like it might just be the integer one. And if we go to count value, we can confirm that suspicion. We plug x equals one in, and we see that this really is a root. So this polynomial has a nice root, as it were. X equals one is a nice root. It's just an integer. It's not some ugly decimal. To be to be clear about what I, what wouldn't be a nice root, something like zero point zero one seven eight, any kind of ugly decimal. But we just have a nice integer root. And our goal is to use the nice root to find the two. Ugly roots. And I mean, I haven't, I've tried to be up front with you. There are, there are a lot of elephants in the room here. It's a whole room full of elephants. Most real world polynomials don't have nice roots, so this doesn't work for most real world polynomials. Even if a real world polynomial does have nice roots, it would really make more sense to just use a computer to approximate the other roots rather than messing around with polynomial division. But, but the department chair wants this material taught, this material gets taught. So um, the way that we could use this nice root to find the so-called ugly roots is polynomial division, more specifically synthetic polynomial division. Let me make a statement. If C is a root of a polynomial P of X, then X minus C divides evenly into P of X. That is to say, we can take P of X and we can divide it by x minus c using synthetic division. 
and there won't be any remainder. P of X divided by X minus C equals Q of X. And why does that matter? Well, if you multiply both sides by X minus C, we'll get P of X written as X minus C times Q of X. And before we go any further, that's we're just going to work with this example today. Let's go ahead and see this statement in action. We have found, looking at our cultivator, that one is a nice root. According to what I just said in this frame, that should mean that if we take this polynomial and divide it by x minus 1, we ought to get a nice polynomial. I mean, we ought to, this ought to divide evenly, and we should just get some polynomial Q of X. Because people seemed confident with synthetic division, I'm going to go a little quickly through this now but certainly tell me if something isn't clear. The one drops down, one times one is one, one plus one is two, two times one is two, negative three plus two is negative one, Negative one times one is negative one. One plus negative one is zero. And again, I'm only going that fast because the homework seems to suggest that people can do this synthetic division without a lot of fuss. But if, if you do have questions, feel free to ask them. If not, we do have a remainder of zero, just like we wanted. And because we started with a third degree polynomial, this is quadratic x squared plus 2x minus 1. I'm going to erase that synthetic division. Does everybody have it written down? So I'm now going to take both sides of this equality. I mean, this is an equality. Something is equal to something else. And I'm going to multiply it by x minus 1. x cubed plus x squared minus 3x plus 1 equals x minus 1 
times x squared plus 2x minus 1. So you see what I've done is I've taken that nice root and I've used it as a factoring tool. This polynomial we're interested in is now written as the product of two other polynomials. And I'm trying to find the roots of this polynomial. I, I have that stated as my goal. So what I'm trying to do is find when this polynomial equals zero. And now we're going to hit this problem with something called the zero product property. And all of this zero product property says, you're multiplying two things together, the product is zero. The only way that can happen is if one of the terms you're multiplying is equal to zero. Like if both of these terms were positive, the product would be positive. If they were both negative, both the product would be negative, would be positive. If one of them was positive and the other was negative, the product would be negative. The only way the product can be a zero, a number that is neither positive nor negative, is if one of these terms equals zero. Well, if x minus one equals zero, that just tells us x equals one, and that's nothing. We, we already knew x was equal to 1. We already found that nice root. But what if x squared plus 2x minus 1 equal to 0? Well, the solutions to this are also roots. And we can solve this using the quadratic form of x squared plus 2x minus 1 equals 0 gives x equals negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus four times a times c, all divided by two times a. You can use note cards on tests. You don't have to memorize this formula, but I will warn you, it's going to keep coming up. So negative two plus or minus the square root of eight. Why eight? Because we've got those two negative signs, they're being multiplied together and a negative times a negative is a positive. So four plus, Four. So negative two plus 
the square root of eight over two comma negative two minus the square root of eight over two. If we now plug in the nice root, the root we already knew when we sort of started this whole process. We now have all three roots of this polynomial. I'm going to now try to summarize this. So I was going to ask if there were any questions, but maybe we should wait until after the summary. So our goal here is to find the roots of E of X. And step one and this is maybe the third elephant crowded into this room to do this process where you're trying to find the roots. Step one is to find a root. That's not a very helpful step. One, but the assumption I think is that you'll put this into your activator and you'll look for nice roots that way. So once you find a nice root C, you do. This synthetic division you get Q of X. And now P of X is X minus C. Times Q of X. And we have a new goal. Find the roots of this new polynomial Q of X. And in a perfect world, I mean, it would certainly be nice if Q of X is a quadratic, we can just use the quadratic form to the, but if Q of X isn't a quadratic, we just repeat these steps. We find a nice root. We do a polynomial division. <clears throat> and that then is this root finding process. Um, does anybody have any questions about it? Well, if you discover you do have questions, you can, okay, I really did not bring the class work, but it's all printed out. Just give me a minute. I'm going to go to the house. 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 I'm going to go to the house.
Have you seen the video? Uh, oh my God. God. You're in for a oh, nice. Cool. That's about to fuck you. Not sure. Looking at this, I'm not sure if you really have enough room, but you can use the fact if you want to. I will. I actually have a question. It's, yeah. Can you um, tell the example of how you, how would you find the room on the top later again? Yeah. Yeah. Let me shut this down. Thank you, people. Let me shut this down. So, on the calculator, I mean, the assumption of this, sort of the assumption of the problem is that one of these roots is going to be an integer. I mean, this process basically doesn't work. If you just have a bunch of ugly decimals. So, I mean, really, I just graphed this and then I looked at the roots and I said, well, this isn't an integer. And this, I mean, it's between negative two and negative three. And this isn't an integer, it's between zero and one. But it looks like maybe this graph hits the axis at one, and that would be an integer root. And to verify that, I mean, there are a few ways you could verify that. You could just say, okay, one plus one is two, minus three is negative one plus one is zero. So one is a root because you plug it in there and you get to zero. The other way you could have your calculator do that work for you. You'd go to the calc menu, you know, the same menu we've been using to do a few things by now. And if you want to look at a specific value of X, you can select a value. And if you then select X equals one, the calculator will tell you what Y is. And we once again verify that Y is zero. So one is a root. 